Wow. That's a crazy thing to say. FNAF has changed this man. <laughs> Generic control in the Dr. Gooey's me here back with another Game 3 FNAF video. Today we're doing Why You Hate My Theories. Last week's video was my secrets out I'm in the FNAF movie, which he went like a little behind the scenes on how, what it was like shooting with the FNAF movie, which is insane that he was in that. You can check my reaction to that. I'll leave it right up there. Also, link down below in the description. Also, in a place on my channel with all the other Game Theory FNAF reactions. Going in chronological order, we are approaching the end or getting caught up with the Game Theory FNAF videos. Uh, once we're done with those, we're going to do other things by Game Theory, like last week. I did How Rich is Luigi based off Luigi's Mansion, and a lot of people enjoyed that video. They also enjoyed the Film Theory video. They've all I've done other Film Theory videos, like with the Amazing Digital Circus. I might do his Murder Drones video. I also want to do some of the Minecraft lore videos. I think that could also be really interesting. So stay tuned, because there's a lot of good things coming to the channel. I hope you're subscribed to those future videos. You can also become a patron, get the videos a day early for $3 a month. I have no paywalls on the channel, so the people that can give, I appreciate that you do, because it goes so far in supporting the channel. Uh, this year, I've made, I'm going to make over 900 videos and have read over 50,000 comments so I kind of have a pretty good idea why people are going to hate his theories given not the fact that I've read 50,000 comments this year alone uh, which means I've made a thousand videos in the last 13 months because last December I did 100 videos I do it all myself because I'm here to make you small not make you pay and that's why I have no paywalls because I want as many people to see my videos as possible and hopefully I can make their day just a tiny little better especially if they leave a comment because I read every single comment but let's go ahead and jump into why you hate my theories all right uh, I've read 50,000 comments this year. Hello, I have a feeling I'm going to be able to... I have a pretty good idea why people are going to hate his theories. About FNAF, but, but once we're done with FNAF, today, we're, doing it on the we're going to do other things you, have I by Game Theory. theory for you. It is a theory Last week was How Rich is Luigi. Absolutely guaranteed to hate. To hate. Yes. Get your pitchforks ready, my friends. I am prepared to get dragged all across Twitter and Reddit for this That's one. Twitter. Then again, honestly, that's kind of to be expected yeah, at no. this point, because that's largely been the response to a lot of our FNAF theories lately. Yeah. Any theory that everyone hates at it. this point starts with this everyone has opinion. wave of comments like, Matt's theorizing has gone downhill at this point. His latest FNAF theories are lazy, proper research is not being done. He's clearly running really? out of material. I'm genuinely wondering if he's even passionate about this wow. podcast anymore. Wow, that's a, a crazy thing to say. theories and straight up telling misinformation. <sighs> How are you calling a theory misinformation? In fact, uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, but pretty much every script that we do at this point, especially about this franchise, always comes packaged with some sort of predetermined disclaimer right at the top. Cue the clip. Fair warning, though, the conclusions we've reached that solve security breach, whew, they are controversial. I, I feel good about them. Like, I think that we've locked in on a that lot of the answers ago, here. That was a while ago, I think. Uh, oh, they're going to raise a lot of discussion. Let's just say that you're either going to love that episode or hate it. I don't and really they hated think there's going to be much in between on that one. <laughs> and while we'll certainly get to my problems here in a minute, let me just say, I seem to be in good company. It's not just me getting these sorts of responses. Oh, no, dude. A lot of FNAF theorists are receiving the same sort of... Oh, it's, it's not even John, just FNAF, FNAF theories. He has regularly told that, quote, his recent theories are horrible. <laughs> yes, I went to a printer and actually printed that out so I could read it. Nice. Uh, John lied about the contents of the most recent story. And here's another one. Uh -huh. I don't want to be rude, but the mimic and baby theory sucks. I don't want to be rude, huh? Well, That's pretty rude. Look up the definition of what it means to be rude there, friendo. And it's not just me and John either. Rye Toast, another FNAF theory oh, yeah. involved with this one. Uh, he was told that his theories massively whiff. I, I mean, They're honestly, theories. What do you expect? To go on and on here. The feedback is endless. But the TLDR of all of this is that I went down the line of FNAF theorists. Oh, hey, look at this. Is that ID's fantasy? Over and over yeah. Again. It's not just my theories that are getting all this hate. It's all theories. And that's weird. So... I figure that I just saw an Undertale a theory about that. streaming on Saturdays. <laughs> I think I know why this is happening. And honestly, just like the FNAF lore, it's pretty darn complicated. Uh -huh. At this rate, if we don't actually stop to take the time and address it, I worry that it could actually end up harming this community and the whole FNAF franchise as a whole. First off, I think it's important that we set some context here. Every FNAF theory that we release at this point is met with the internet largely dismissing it as insane or jumping the animatronic Felix the Shark. <laughs> That's a natural thing. Dad is Bonnie Bro. It is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I think it's the grand. I think Bonnie Bro is I mean, the grandfather. I said that Deadpool is Ernest Hemingway. Uh, I That's think that a... one was dumber, but sure, go for it. Maybe you missed that one. Daycare attendants' endoskeleton teeth match the mimic. Uh, this one right here says it is dumb, 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 dumb. Sure. Disagree on that one. We'll get to that in a second. Oh, and this one. You don't have one take to do this. Robot. 
This theory he, he definitely is literal is. cancer. Wow. No, my friend. No, it's not. It is not a literal cancer. And if me suggesting that a fictional character in a YA murder bunny game is a robot is that bad to you, go touch grass. <laughs> anyway, you get the point. There is a very I'm with Matt. here of I agree. Sorts of comments. But the main thing is that this is People are like, why do you beat yourself? I'm like, if you've read the comments, explanation for the first you would know why I do it. 2015, people were so mad. They hated it. Because honestly, I was dismissing four games of story and beloved characters with the whole, oh, it was all just a dream trope. Honestly, I didn't love it either, but it felt like where the evidence was largely pointing at the time. Yeah. And yet, it's only now, all these years later, that the sentiment has finally changed on that theory. And people largely agree that dream theory was right at the time. And that that's God time. just pivoted the story later with Sister Location. Or at least it was right until then this new Tales of the Pizza Plex book oh, is coming God. out. And apparently it rewrites. Every time I look in a book area, I see a new. Creation. Thanks for that one, Scott. You didn't even book. let me have that victory, could you? What do you want from me, Scott? I'm selling the books for you. Literally. But speaking of the books, by the way, it also happened with those books. I started using the books seven years ago. Jesus, seven, I've gone through that many years. Seven, this is my literary <laughs> contribution. Seven years of this book. I could be reading like War and Peace or. I don't know who that. Never heard of that. Uncle Tom's Cabin. I haven't heard of those. No, I get to read Tales from the Pizza Plex One Lally's Game. Great. This is how I enrich myself. <laughs> to my knowledge, I was one of the first, if not the first person, to seriously use the books for overall for theorizing. Let yeah. me tell you, people hated it. Yes, they the did. Time. They despised it. They're like, why would you do that? Why would you talk about the books? But those and then it turned out being right. helped me predict that William Afton was going to be the villain, that Charlie was going to be revealed to be the puppet, that sister location was buried under the Afton house, and that Michael Afton was the foxy bro. And that's just a few of the conclusions they helped me reach. And now, here we are, a whopping seven years and Later, they're right. got a couple of gray hairs, and the pendulum has swung it completely in the other direction. Now, the community holds me and all the other FNAF theorists hostage if we're not looking at the books, or if Wait, we're really? they properly. They require the book? As 100% canon to the events of the game. Long story short, time is a powerful thing. And in this hindsight's 2020. especially, it is super powerful, considering that Scott repeatedly has said that he uses both the games and books in the future to clarify the events of the past. Or, you know, that's just his shorthand way of saying that he uses those future things to just ultimately pick the direction that he wanted to go the entire time. Yeah, it leaves it open-ended so he can close it later. The craziest theories in the moment become the correct theories a year or two years or, or seven. even five years down the line as more details solidify around the story. For a great example of this, let's just take a look at everyone's favorite Gregory as a robot theory. Oh, yeah. I propose that I agree with it. the robotic reincarnation of the crying child. When I look online, this is often the one that people point to as the point where Matt Pat fell off, where he literally lost that, the wait, of the game. That's what and did to it. Day, it has entered the hallowed pantheon of theories that get memed to death, right alongside Luigi's eggplant height. Wait, people are saying I should react to that. Girth. I said his height, Luigi's right? Girth. It's a girthy boy. And of course, the Lord above all, Sans's nest, the, the king oh, that rules the Just started right? Undertale. And more often than not, that robot theory gets boiled down to this singular graphic right here. So much so that we actually started to meme on it ourselves. Oh. And you know, mm -hmm. when it gets to us memeing something, it is definitely dead. We are so cringe that we make your dad's jokes look cool. But here's the thing. Gregory is a robot is now a theory that has spawned over four other theories and constitutes over 15,000 words. Good and Lord. so dismiss it as purely white kid in striped shirt go brrrr. <laughs> Isn't that you just falling into the same trap that you, the internet accusers, have leveled at me? You say Fair. I ignore evidence, that I don't do my research, that I ignore key details just to forward my intended narrative, but... Isn't that exactly what you're doing there? I mean, look at the facts. And for Bro the people, literally has had enough. Screenshots, I'll try to keep it all on a singular page since I know that you all love to boil my theories down to one image. So how else uh, um, would you explain that board. Gregory looks like the crying child, that he is colored in purple, which connects him to the Afton family, that he's taken a bite out of a golden Freddy head ice cream cone uh -huh. just like the crying child got bit, that he's being called broken, which parallels the final line said to the crying child, his vision getting all staticky when Vanny skips past him in the pizza uh -huh. and him looking differently when Freddy gets Roxy's eyes. I don't know about you, but that right there 
That seems to me like a lot of important evidence. So who's really ignoring evidence to forward their intended narrative here? Me, the person trying to concoct a theory to explain all of those details, or anyone online who continues to insist that Gregory, eh, you know, he's just a normal kid. Yeah, just he's like definitely in not. Game theory and book theory, more evidence for this has just started to stack up. Since the release of Security Breach, the Tales from the Pizzaplex books, which many are now considering to be a hundred percent canon to the games, these oh. books have repeatedly included over and over again story after story of kids either becoming robots. Why does he have the post-it notes in there? Robots or being taken over by robots. Is that for like you don't future even videos? Have to read the stories in the books to know this. I mean, just look at the theme of these covers, right? Robot humanoid kid. Robot humanoid. This one doesn't count. Robot <laughs> humanoid. Count. Like, the last book in the series that's coming out like right now as this episode releases, it is literally about a kid who turned himself into a robot. Yeah, look at it. He's got oh. human fingers and everything. Another one of those stories, uh, this time GGY, it focuses on a boy named Gregory. That's why he has post notes. Sounds familiar. Who sets <laughs> high <laughs> scores in the pizza place. Oh, wow. Again, should sound familiar. Yeah. He disappears multiple school counselors. Disappears counselors. What a... Dr. Rabbit. This story right here is basically shouting in our faces the fact that Gregory is patient 46. Confirming that, regardless of how you feel about Gregory as a protagonist, he's a bad dude. He is killing people off, or at the very least, <laughs> he's making them disappear to protect whatever making them disappear. he has. Something that, again, we predicted as part of that Robot Gregory series, and something that people at the time really didn't like. Plus, you can't ignore the fact that he's calling himself Dr. Rabbit, which again, Afton. is yet another connection over to the Afton family. And while it doesn't ever explicitly say that Gregory is a robot, it does write him with some very oddly robotic characteristics. Yeah, he's also a quote from here. Like a hacker. He turned the wave. He smiled. Then he cocked his head and studied Tony for several seconds. It's weird, right? People it's don't written usually in a very do that. Specific way. It's it's an odd detail that signaled my theorist senses. Like it's a process. Honestly, it feels to me like he's written like an AI. Yeah. Stopping to learn, study human behavior. To grow Maybe it's a first like human he's seen kind of. And that sort of. of AI connection actually returns when we go back to Security Breach. Here, I'd like to direct your attention to the wall code from uh -huh. the secret sister location we found at the end of that game. Very quickly, the FNAF community figured out that this chunk of wall code right there read as follows: Dodge, duck, flash, shoot, crawl, run. I don't even know how they figure that out. Who is the only character to do all of those actions? It's Gregory. He's flashing faz cams. He's shooting faz lasers. He is literally crushing the band. So this room, an Afton room, mind you, is in some ways trying to speak to Gregory. Uh -huh. but why would it be written in such a weird language? Well, because honestly, a robot, he didn't know how to read English, maybe. I don't until know. Until a year later, when this book finally came out again. Uh, this is the same one with GGY, but this time it had a tale called The Storyteller. This one is a tale all about a genius roboticist who speaks to his AI creations in a very specific way. Quote again from this book, Every sheet of paper was covered with odd stick drawings and strange symbols that were not at all familiar to Mr. Burroughs. Burroughs? Squares, Joe? Loops, triangles within triangles. The code is the language oh, of the mimic. Oh, that's terrifying. The mimic being an AI program designed to copy those it watched. All signs point to Gregory being a robot built as part of this AI system. So throw that one over there onto that one pager screen grab from earlier. Oh yeah, and don't forget the fact that we also discovered that robot kid heads were found down in the uh -huh. sister location bunker, showing that Afton was working on robot kid projects way sooner than any of us ever expected. That should actually be on there too. And oh yeah, <laughs> it you that grows. Screen grab? Pretty crowded in there, right? Yeah. And even if it's a lot of evidence. Isn't a robot, it feels pretty darn What's the evidence saying he's not? This franchise probably is at this point. Here's the thing: I'm not bringing all this up to try and convince you, the internet critics out there of this theory. There are some dead horses that I just want to leave alone, believe it or not. And honestly, I don't care if you believe this theory or not. I do not care in the slightest. I have no horse in this race, though apparently I have a lot of horse <laughs> analogies to make, which is weird. That's I another horse analogy. Having fun in my little corner of the internet trying to solve silly video game mysteries with a cool team and go insane and an awesome community of theorists. I would love you internet critics to join us. That would be awesome. We are an open-minded community. We are welcoming we embrace you with open arms in the most fan-friendly way possible but not in a way that's going to get us canceled but for the people <laughs> over on reddit and twitter who accuse me and all the other theorists of ignoring important information for the sake of forwarding they just don't know what they're talking about just because we don't care about this franchise ask yourself honestly who's really the closed-minded ones here Ooh. we're the ones pointing out this information 
We're the ones who are trying to solve. It's basically him defending his team, it, which that actually feels it's, it's very in character for Matt to honest, publicly this, say something to defend his team. Standards for clue hunting. I have been raked over the coals a lot across recent theories for making visual connections between characters and objects. My last theory, great example of this. I drew parallels that was what, between the two weeks ago and the mimic weeks ago? because both of them have very unique teeth. Where very each individual tooth moves. Is independently operated. It's a completely unique design. For that only is for them only shared by those two characters and yet a lot of people were quick to dismiss the entire idea as just surface level oh it's only a coincidence but nothing is ever a coincidence franchise we're talking about here friends we started with counting animatronic toes and you're bodies. right but the reason that i bring that up is that while many dismissed that specific connection i saw those exact same conversations happening around the mimic's hand with its clawed fingers oh my gosh clawed fingers just like Burn Trap or the Glamrock's hands. You do realize that you're doing the exact same thing that you were criticizing me for, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're allowed to compare sharp, pointy hands, then I can compare independently moving teeth, right? In the end, he well, things has have a point. gotten more sophisticated in the theorizing space, and we have higher standards for our evidence, and we should always be looking for more evidence. He has a teleprompter, doesn't he? Conclusions. Simple observations like fingers or teeth. They're easy ones to build off of. They're easy ones to Does start he? exploring. And hey, where they lead to can be some really awesome... Is, he, I don't, is it by the we camera or is it over to the side? I don't know. pre-programmed to seek closure in whatever we're doing. And it makes us feel secure and brings a sense of satisfaction, of closure, right? There's actually an entire brand of psychology dedicated to this very fact. So naturally, when we're faced with a series that doesn't give us any sort of clean or definitive answers, it's easy for us to want to find the simplest solution or cling on to certain details like they're indisputable facts because it's better to be wrong than to be uncertain and FNAF makes that hard because it's a story that's built on shifting sand it, it went from souls possessing animatronics to, to liquid soul metal to digital consciousness transfer he, 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 and then to goo that literally tries to steal your identity and well that's uh, yeah Honestly, it's also what makes the franchise so fun. Taking the small little puzzle pieces and extrapolating possible answers. And but some things being honestly, right and some things being way wrong. People the wrong way. A few weeks ago, I asked a bunch of you online to take the Myers-Briggs personality test. Now, oh, this really? is a really fun How did that go? It breaks you down into one of 16 different personality types based on letters. Are you an E? I, I think I was an I in FJ. Are you with people or are you Maybe. an I? introvert who likes your quiet alone time are you a structured I and organized j for much. judging or are you a, go a thousand with videos in 13 months t? do you prefer logic and thinking t or do you like to go with your gut and your feelings f but for this particular debate i actually wanted to focus on two letters s and n now these two letters focus on how you process information the s stands for sensing. This means that you take the information from the world around you and you take it at face value. You use your five senses to determine what is real and factual. True. It often means that you look at the world in a very little random way. hurricane. And on the well, it's in the Pacific, so I guess it would be a... It's not uh, the cleanest of lettering systems, but they'd already use the I. Typhoon. Anyway, if you're an N, it means that you interpret information in more abstract ways. Rather than just relying on exactly what's in front of you physically, you take that information, and then you go a couple steps... You put it in your head and, and turn it into something else. ...interesting ways to go beyond just your five senses. So... How does this relate to theorizing? Well, is he the actually vast, on the couch? The majority of this channel subscribers are ends. They're taking information. I see the reflection on the couch, like not the reflection, but the shadow. Connections to find solutions. In fact, almost everyone who works at Team Theorist here is an end, purely by coincidence. It's not like you can actively screen for something like that. It just works out <laughs> this way because the way we do things here requires a certain mindset. To a mindset open that mindset. only about twenty-five percent of the population is innately comfortable with. Is Mario a villain? No, of course not. There are so many examples of him being a hero, but you also can't ignore little details like the time he chained up Donkey Kong or the time that he stomped on his little brother's toe. And nice. that right there yields some pretty interesting conclusions if you connect all those dots, leading to, hey, Mario is right. a villain. That's not to say that you can't also theorize as an S. You absolutely can. In fact, our creative director Tom and oh, the math theorist John were both in town a couple months ago and they showcased this exact difference in mindset. They probably best showed it with how to interpret Michael's ending monologue from Sister Location. Tom is they... an N, John is an S. Oh, John really? used the literal words being said to inform his interpretation, while Tom was more focused on how the words were said to imply meaning. Fun fact, by the way, after we shot this video, we got into contact with John and we asked 
asked him to take this test. I've acted a couple of videos. Since he first visited, his Myers Briggs has actually shifted to more of an N type. Remember, the Myers Briggs test isn't just black and white, it's a spectrum. John was originally 59% S, but now that's shrunk down to 32%. I'm not sure what I was. I'm pretty sure I was I and no more S tendencies. It's just that his exposure to the wonderful world of the changed him to look at things differently. To link kinda have to to make connections from small details. I really wonder what Matt Pat was before this. The more literal before FNAF. Done a couple years ago. And FNAF has like changed this man. Difference that's happening in the fan base right now. I think a lot of the newer fans of the franchise are S's. And when you look at our survey results, you can actually see this playing out. With almost 25% of S's joining during either the FNAF VR, AR, or oh. Security Breach era. Compare that to N's, where only 18% joined during that hmm. era. And so when evidence needs to be interpreted with an N mentality, it's making them uncomfortable or even outright mad. Take, for instance, this clip from our most recent episode but secondly and more importantly cassie actually knows i think the truth about what happened to glam i seriously she knows think that it was that Monty Gator it was her grandfather that was bonnie bro that's my theory that personally description of the glam rock bonnie plush it says quote dad wouldn't tell me why they replaced bonnie in fact this was one of those moments where people outright accused me of lying about the evidence saying that i was ignoring the text that i was literally showing on the screen that would be really dumb of me if that was what I was yeah, doing. Yeah, no, but that would be... Let's actually take a closer look at that specific line. Dad wouldn't tell me why they replaced Bonnie. Typically speaking, someone that's an S would look at that line and take it literally. Her dad wouldn't tell her what happened. Therefore, she doesn't know what happened. However, as an N, I'm not just taking those words at face value, nor was I willfully ignoring them. I was just interpreting them differently. Her dad wouldn't tell her what happened. That doesn't necessarily mean she doesn't know what happened. Your parents might not tell you how to cook a meal, but that doesn't mean that you don't have ways of finding out how to cook. That's same true. thing applies to this other line from the same portion of our video. This one about the Monty AR plushie. Quote again, it's hard to look at. Well, S's would read that and interpret it that maybe it's bright, it's shiny. It is physically hard to look at because it's an AR object. So maybe that's why. Yeah. But N's would read that line and probably read it differently. Nothing like it's else not Cassie says about a Like AR there's something the trying traumatizing related to it to look at at least from a physical perspective so what makes the monty ar thing so different well maybe because it's not physically difficult to look at but emotionally yep. difficult to look at it's hard to look at because she knows the truth about what monty did to glamour there you Bob. go but here's the big one and this is the one that honestly has divided the fan base for the better part of the last year it which is, is this line used to market the new tales from the pizzaplex books quote a collection of new Five Nights at Freddy's short stories set in the world of the newest game. This one line has been used time and time it's again to say the that these, are these tales from the Pizza to Plus books, they are 100% canon to the games. one for one with the game's stories. That right there, that is a very S interpretation, a literal interpretation of what's being said. But there's but the end is that it's interpretation of that what? You can Parallel? You can set in a world without it being the same world. I think Rye Toast actually said this one best. This Super Mario Brothers nice microphone that just came out. That's set in the Mario Brothers universe, 100%. But it's not canon to the games. Hey, Rye. Your end showing, but that's <laughs> always how the books have operated, and so many, myself included, have treated these new books in the same way. And as a result, we've gotten lots of hate for it. I mean, it's not an invalid interpretation; it's just a different, less literal interpretation than one that many of you on Reddit are familiar with. And it's one that honestly is more in line with statements that Scott has made in the past about the books. Though, can we all be honest with ourselves here? That line was cut from all the marketing. It's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. You have to oh, dig really? up like historical websites to way back it. machine it's now been replaced with this line that is published across all the books scott coffin spins three sinister novella length tales from uncharted corners of this series as canon and again that right there that is even more vague and non-specific because then we're from the games about areas that are uncharted never explored before which honestly even if you're choosing to read that line with a literal interpretation feels like it's even more support for them not being on yeah no that's true the games since we have charted a lot of the topics that you see in some of these stories like the gregory story great example we literally there's a character named gregory is slightly gregory. different than how he acts in the books it's not one for one it cannot be literal i'm just pointing it out it is a difficult position to defend and all of that is without me even pointing out the differences between the books 
and the games. Like the fact that there isn't a giant baobab tree in the middle of the pizza plex. The fact uh -huh. that the pizza plex is not shaped like a giant pizza slice in the game. Is that what it was? In the book. Oh, the fact that there a... isn't a giant VR AR dome that's turning people in the fast. That's a and that crazy no shape for a building. That's running through the center of the restaurant. And those are just some of the differences that pop to the top of my head. I have seen people online picking and choosing certain stories to be canon and certain stories to not be. That's not how that works. And again, I have to call out, isn't that just picking and choosing certain evidence pieces to forward your intended narrative? And he has a point. He's very... Those of you who are convinced that the books are canon are doing exactly the same thing that you criticize online theorists of. You have an answer that you're committed to, <laughs> and so every theory is based on a core assumption. And if it's okay for oh, it's you, D, but... it has to be okay for us too. In the end, here's the important thing to remember. We're all on the same team. We're all working towards the same goal. We are trying to solve this franchise together as completely he has a as point possible there. using the most satisfying evidence-based answers we can. Because we all love this franchise. We all love a good mystery. I haven't seen anything by Ozone before. I also haven't watched anything about Riot Toast, but I've heard Riot Toast before. by being open to all ideas. All ideas, no matter where. Yeah, and don't discourage somebody for thinking differently. And even when we do get things right, it's okay. If everybody thought the same, the world would be boring. It's like sports, if everybody cheered for the same team, it'd be boring. This franchise changes. It evolves. It adds more lore in places that. But Trevor Lawrence is the best. So when someone makes a big old swing, don't be quick to write them off. I mean, I suspected that Chica was a mediocre melody, just out of the blue, and that Mr. Hippo was at one point one of the core animatronic lineup. Both things that at the time seemed like pretty big swings back in the day. Uh -huh. But both things that at this point actually have a lot of evidence. They, yeah, they up. could be. So sometimes those big risk theories actually yield some pretty big rewards. Well, also, in if you're end, making a video about it, you want to get like the crazy thing that maybe nobody else would think of. It's actually a lot harder to then So it makes a lot of sense to do that. It takes guts to put yourself out there and concoct a theory, so be nice to other people's ideas because exactly. that's the way we learn. That's the way we grow. True. We do it by asking questions and making mistakes. Exactly. If every theory were perfect the first time out, well, let's be honest. It'd be boring. There wouldn't be any mystery to this. You wouldn't watch these videos. It wouldn't be as fun. It would be kind of boring. And honestly, it wouldn't have spawned this incredible franchise that we have today. It also wouldn't have spawned this amazing merch. Nice. Like, like this spring trap jacket, which we, yep. Oh, and oh, they're just throwing yeah, some. Okay. Oh, there, yeah, there's a jacket he was wearing Thank in the, uh, Mr. Tom, the last video. You're the best. <laughs> All this incredible. That Black is. Mr. Freddy's merch available down in the merch shelf down below this video. A jacket's kind of cool. It launched sure today, I... and we worked on it, and I'm very proud of it. it Honestly, I don't think the prices really are that cool expensive. From different parts of the like for, especially for varsity jacket, like a YouTube high clothing years. stuff. It launched today. And we had a FNAF video going up, so it felt like I probably should mention it, even though this is serious. Let's bury the hatchet, shall we? There's a movie coming, there's a new game. Yeah, there's a movie cool coming. Why don't you tell us about us, Matt? Hey, there's that cool new line of apparel. Let us move forward together as a united family of FNAF theorists. N's, S's, and every letter in between. All of us <laughs> united in our love of mystery and our collective hatred of Fazgu. That's fair. But hey, that's just a that's theory. That's just a theory. Oh okay. god, that's an older video. We're in childhood Thanks since 2011. There's the books. I'm toss this merch at you. <laughs> take this apparel. Take, take this take apparel it. and run with it. <laughs> except, for, except for this one. He's keeping that one. I might change into this one later today. <laughs> <laughs> like the shirt. It's oh, like there's the Minecraft game, game theory, which I will probably do. Oh, this confetti shirt. This is merch too. I forgot. No! Oh, and my Let's jacket eat isn't tea? FNAF merch, but it's purple. It's not FNAF merch. It's confetti, like Chica. Chica. Woo, party! <laughs> okay, Matt. So the next video is probably going to be a food theory video, which might actually be the first food theory I've ever reacted to. Honestly, a lot of MatPat stuff is really interesting to me. The way he thinks and questions he comes up with really kind of like trigger something in the brain. He's very good at coming up with ideas, which I imagine they probably have like a team of people that are just kind of like pitch video ideas because it is like a whole team and stuff like that. So somebody be like, hey, why don't we do a theory on this question and this question they probably like ask people like oh that's a good idea oh that's not a good idea or we can maybe think about that or maybe like do a script review or something like that but no nah, there's gonna be a lot of MatPat stuff on the channel so like i said you might as well subscribe if you enjoy them and keep coming back to them you can become a patron and get them a day early so you do not miss them because um I'm pretty sure they get an email notification if you're a patron, and I apologize to all my patrons for the last couple weeks because on uh, when Monday I think they've been getting five <laughs> videos a day early, even though I've been uploading six videos because one of them is a stream vod from me playing Undertale, which is going up on the Duck Goose Gaming on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Uh, but I'm also streaming it on Saturdays at 5 p.m. Uh, five to seven. I just played the second part today and. 
uh, me and Papyrus are on a date. And I just explored his kitchen, which is a very interesting thing to do on a date. But I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. I hope I made just handle better. I look forward to reading your comments. But until the next video, take care and keep the music. We were playing.